Portuguese and Spanish, although closely related sister languages, differ in many details of their phonology, grammar, and lexicon. Both are part of a broader group known as West Iberian Romance, which also includes several other languages or dialects with fewer speakers, all of which are mutually intelligible to some degree. The most obvious differences are in pronunciation. Mutual intelligibility is generally greater for the written languages than for their spoken forms. Compare, for example, the following sentences. Al buen entendedor pocas palabras bastan, Spanish, al b we, n e, n t e, n d e, eth o, r po, cas pa la b as b astan. Al bom entendedor pocas palabras bastam, European Portuguese, w beta o tilde, t d o po, w, k p lab beta at w, Brazilian Portuguese, w b o tilde, w, it de, dox po, w, k s p lab z bat w, roughly equivalent to the English proverb, a word to the wise is sufficient, or, a more literal translation, to a good listener, a few words are enough. There are also some significant differences between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese as there are between British and American English or Peninsular and Latin American Spanish. This article notes these differences below only where both Brazilian and European Portuguese differ not only from each other, but from Spanish as well. Both Peninsular .e. European, and Latin American Spanish differ not only from each other, but also from Portuguese, or either Brazilian or European Portuguese differs from Spanish with syntax not possible in Spanish while the other dialect does not. Topic. Sample texts Portuguese and Spanish share a great number of words that are spelled either identically or almost identically although the pronunciation almost always differs, or which differ sometimes in predictable ways. Consider, for example, the following paragraph, taken from the Gramática Esencial del Español, by Manuel Seco Espasa Calpa, 1989, and compare it to the Portuguese rendition below, noting the lexical similarity and the slight changes in word order. Puro, a pesar de esta variedad de posibilidades que la vos pasi, Siria un muy pobre instrumento de comunicación si no cantara más que con ella. La capacidad de expresión del hombre no dispondría de más medios que la de los animales. Le vos, sola, es para el hombre escasamente una materia en form, que para convertirse en un instrumento perfecto de comunicación deba ser sometida a un cierto tratamiento. Esa manipulación que recibe le vos son las articulaciones. Mas, a pesar da variedade de possibilidades que a vos pasui, seria um instrumento de comunicação muito pobre se não se contas com mais do que ela. A capacidade de expressão do hamam não disporia de mais meios que a dos animais. A vos, sezinha, a para o hamam apenas uma materia in form, que para se converter num instrumento perfeito de comunicação deve esser submetida a um certo tratamento. Isa manipulação que a vos recebe sao as articulacos. Vocabulary <inaudible> 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 Topic. Cognates Most of the frequent words in the two languages share a common origin in Latin, but several of these cognates differ, to a greater or lesser extent, in meaning. Topic. Two forms versus one form Some words have two forms in one language, but just one in the other. 
Portuguese criar corresponds to both Spanish criar to create and criar to raise. Spanish sueño, which means dream, and also is used to say that one is sleepy, corresponds to both Portuguese sonho, dream, and sono, sleep. The former from Latin somnium and the latter from somnus, which produced the same outcome in Spanish. Topic: False friends. Some pairs of cognates differ in that they have a broader or narrower meaning in one language than in the other, or their meanings are entirely different. On this basis they are termed, "...false friends". <laughs> <laughs> Semantic change Many pairs of cognates have come to have different meanings due to semantic change. These false friends include the following Spanish diseñar means to design in Spanish, while its Portuguese cognate diseñar means to draw. Similarly, debujo is Spanish for drawing, but debuxo means sketch in Portuguese although it is rather rare and bookish, having been largely displaced by rascunho, cf. Spanish rasguno, which means scratch. Spanish largo also archaic luengo means long while ancho means wide In Portuguese largo also ancho is wide and longo a cognate of the sp archaic luengo is long Spanish extrañar can mean to find strange or to miss Portuguese estranar means to find strange or to lock horns Spanish raro can mean rare or strange. In Portuguese, it just means rare. Spanish on can mean yet, still and todavia can mean both yet, still or however, nevertheless. Portuguese todavia means however, nevertheless. In Portuguese, yet, still is ainda. Spanish estar embarazada means to be pregnant. Portuguese estar embaracada means to be embarrassed or to be entangled. However, Spanish does have the term embarazoso, a meaning embarrassing, pregnant in Portuguese as gravida. The Portuguese prena and Spanish preñada are used mainly for pregnant animals but rarely for women, in both languages. Spanish exquisito means exquisite, sophisticated. Portuguese esquisito means strange, weird. Experto means expert in both Spanish and Portuguese, but in Portuguese it should not be confused with its homophone esperto, a homophone only in Brazil, which means smart, intelligent. Expert in Portuguese may also be perito, especialista, or eximio, which are the same in Spanish. Sp. Eximio is spelled without the accent mark. Spanish escoba is broom. Portuguese escova is brush or broom, but Portuguese usually chooses vassoura for broom. However, in some varieties of Spanish, escabilla or escabeta means toilet brush. Spanish apelido surname is apelido in European Portuguese, and sobrinome in both Brazilian and European Portuguese, but Portuguese usually say apelido. Spanish sobrenombre, apoda nickname is apelido, alcunha, codinome in Brazilian Portuguese, and alcunha in European Portuguese. Spanish rojo is red. Portuguese roxo is purple. Red in Portuguese is vermelho. In European Portuguese the word encarnado literally in the flesh is also used as synonym of red even though vermelho is more frequent. Spanish rubio means blonde hair. Portuguese ruvo means red hair. Spanish apenas means hardly. Portuguese apenas is only. Thus the Spanish phrase el apenas pudo dormir means he could not even, hardly sleep, or he was just barely able to sleep, whereas the Portuguese phrase ele pod apenas dormir means he could only sleep. Spanish vaso means drinking glass tumbler, while Portuguese vaso means toilet from vaso sanitario, vader in Spanish or flower pot. A drinking glass in Portuguese is capo, while Spanish copa is a wine glass. 
A wine glass in Portuguese is capo or taca, while Spanish taza is a coffee cup or teacup. Spanish taza also refers to the bathroom bowl. Coffee cup in Portuguese is zicara de café per chain avena. Spanish and European Portuguese cachorro means puppy, while in Brazilian Portuguese, it can refer to a dog of any age. Topic: Frequent function words. A number of the frequent function words, pronouns, conjunctions, etc., are cognates in the two languages but are used in slightly different ways, including the following. Topic: Spanish todo, Portuguese tudo. The Spanish pronoun todo can mean all, every, or everything. Portuguese distinguishes between todo all, every masculine and tudo everything neuter, used for an indefinite object or abstraction. To dos los insectos tienen seis patas, Spanish To dos os insectos tem seis patas, Portuguese all insects have six legs, El ladrón lo robo todo, Spanish. O ladrão rubu tudo, Portuguese. The thief stole everything, or the thief stole it all. Topic: <inaudible> Relative and interrogative pronouns. Spanish uses an acute accent on interrogative pronouns, while the corresponding relative pronouns etymologically the same words are spelled without the accent to mark the difference in prosodic stress. As explained below, the acute accent often changes the vowel sound in Portuguese, but not Spanish, for example, quien, who, and quien who, in Spanish, but quem for both in Portuguese. Apart from that, while quem is invariable. Spanish has both the singular quien and the plural quienes. As shown by the examples below, the difference between singular and plural is highlighted by the use of a for singular and sao for plural. Example 1. Quien es ese hombre? Spanish Quemase homem. Portuguese Who's that man? English. Who is invariable? Quien is son s is personas. Spanish. Quem são esses pessoas? Portuguese. Who are those people? English. Again. Who is invariable? In the Portuguese examples, the m at the end of quem is an approximant. It is also a marker for nasalization, as is the nasal diphthong ow in sao. Topic: <laughs> Spanish muy and mucho, Portuguese muito. Spanish distinguishes the adjective mucho, much, many, from the adverb muy, very, quite. Portuguese uses muito for both there's also muy, but it is considered old-fashioned. Saque muchas fotos durante el viaje, Spanish. Tire muitas fotos durante a viagem, Portuguese. I took many photos during the trip, las cerezas están muy maduras. Spanish. As cerezas están muito maduras, Portuguese. The cherries are quite ripe. As an adjective, muito is inflected according to the gender and number of the noun it qualifies, like mucho. As an adverb, it is invariable like muy. Thus, it would be incorrect to say asterisk muitas maduras in the second example. Topic: <laughs> Cardinal numbers. The cardinal numbers are very similar in Spanish and Portuguese, but there are differences of usage in numbers 1 and 2. Spanish has different words for the masculine singular indefinite article a, an, and the numeral 1, thus un capitulo a chapter, but capitulo uno chapter 1. 
In Portuguese, both words are the same, um capitulo and capitulo um. Spanish uno can also be used as a pronoun, like the English generic one, to represent an indeterminate subject, but this is not possible with Portuguese um, the reflexive pronoun se is used instead. Se may be used in Spanish to form passive and impersonal constructions, as well. Uno or se deba pensar antes de actuar, Spanish. Deve se pensar antes de agir, Portuguese. One should think before acting. This still applies in cases where a relatively indeterminate subject is genderized, such as the Spanish to do za una voz all at once, literally all at one voice. It should be rewritten in Portuguese without any cardinal number. For example, to dos juntos all together. On the other hand, in Portuguese, cardinal number two inflects with gender dua if masculine, duas if feminine, while in Spanish dos is used for both. Uno mas uno es igual a dos, Spanish. Um mes um a e igual a dua, Portuguese. One plus one equals two, dos cabezas piensan mejor que una, Spanish. Duas cabezas pensam melhor que uma, Portuguese. Two heads think better than one, tengo dos hermanos y dos hermanas, Spanish. Tenho dua hermanos e duas hermanas, Portuguese. I have two brothers and two sisters. Topic: Conjunctions. The conjunction and in Spanish as y pronounced i before a consonant j before a vowel before all words except those beginning with an i sound spelled i or hi before a syllabic i sound and not the diphthong j as in hierro the Spanish conjunction is e e Portuguese uses e i before all words sal y pimienta Spanish sal e pimenta Portuguese Salt and pepper, Judeo e Hindu, Spanish, Judeo e Hindu, Portuguese, Jewish and Hindu, Leones y Hienas, Spanish, Leos e Hienas, Portuguese, Lions and Hyenas, similarly, for the conjunction, or Spanish uses o, o, before all words except those beginning with o or ho, in which case it uses u, w. Portuguese always uses o al tilde o. Vino o agua, Spanish. Vinho o agua, Portuguese. Wine or water, uno u outro, Spanish. Um o outro, Portuguese. One or the other. Topic: Say, see, see, and sim. In Portuguese, the word say can be a reflexive pronoun or a conjunction meaning if. This may give the false impression that a Portuguese verb is pronominal when it is not. For example, say fico em Paris means if one stayed in Paris. When the conjunction say precedes a pronominal verb, it is common to have a double say in the sentence, such as say say esqueceu da sua cena. If you forgot your password. Topic: <inaudible> Indirect object pronouns. Spanish la and les are changed to say when followed by lo, la, los, or los. For example, mi abuelo les compro los regalos becomes mi abuelo se los compro. See also Combining pronouns in Spanish below. In addition, Spanish uses se as an irregular verb in the first person singular indicative of saber to know, and the second person singular imperative of esser to be. In Portuguese, these are se and se respectively. Topic: Dissimilar words. 
Despite the mostly cognate vocabulary between Spanish and Portuguese, a significant number of common words are entirely different in the two languages although in some cases cognates exist, but are rare or archaic in one of the two languages. Examples include the following Vocabulary differences between the two languages arose from various factors. Topic. French influence Both Portuguese and Spanish have borrowed loanwords either directly from French or by way of French as an intermediary from other mostly Greco-Latin sources. Although no statistical study based on uniform criteria has been carried out, it has been suggested that words of French origin in Portuguese are significantly more numerous than those in Spanish. Here are some examples. Topic: Arabic influence. Spanish kept much of the Mozarabic vocabulary of Arabic origin, while the Mozarabic component was less extensive in Portuguese. Thus we find a number of cases in which the usual Spanish word is derived from Arabic, while the corresponding word in Portuguese is Latin, Greek, Germanic or Celtic derived, as in the following examples. There are some examples where a word of Arabic origin is used in Portuguese but not in Spanish, such as, sp, romero, port, alacrim, port, rosmarinho or rosmarinho means lavender, rosemary, sp, lechuga, port, alface in port, lituga means catsier, lettuce, port, alfayate, sp, sastra, tailor, or more commonly used in Portuguese than in Spanish although the word exists in both languages, such as, chafferies, fountain, Port. Fonte, sp. Fuente or garrafa bottle. Port. Botella, sp. Botella. In a few cases, Spanish and Portuguese have both borrowed different Arabic-derived words for the same meaning, such as sp. Alfambra, port. Alcadifa, carpet. Sp. Aduana, port. Alfandega, customs. The latter is derived from the name of a town in Portugal that once stood on the boundary between Christendom and Islam. Arabic is the source of a few personal given names and numerous surnames and place names in Spain, including the following. Almadina, Asusena, Carmen, Guadalupe, Muhammad, Soraya, Zulema, Abinamir, Abengoa, Abengoa, Abinojer, Alcala, Almazara, Asabrin, Asayatuno, Asatan, Aguera, Aguilo, Alamar, Alamino, Alanzor, Alberol, Alberin, Albo, Albacine, Alcantid, Alcazar, Alcudia, Alguacil, Alabar, Almaguer, Almandos, Almandos, Almeria, Almodovar, Almoravit, Ambez. Amor, Andujar, Aranda, Ayas, Aias, Benayas, Bardashi, Benahara, Benameji, Benasar, Benasar, Benavides, Bendala, Kalatayad, Servados, Suda, Sid, Cordoba, Dris, Fauli, Galvez, Godestes, Granada, Guadalupe, Gudiel, Hispan, Ilan, Ilan, Alains, John, Madrid, Manzanek, Mesquita, Mesquitas, Mudara, Palacios, Palamoc, Pasqual, Quirino, Toledo, Trujillo, Valls, Zanata, Zaratan, Zarate, Zaratan, Zegri, Segri, Zorida. Topic: <inaudible> Influences from other languages. Spanish and Portuguese have acquired different words from various Amerindian, African, and Asian languages, as in the following examples. Pineapple, sp. Piña from the Spanish word for pine cone, port abacashi from tupi or ananas from tupi guarani, also in Spanish, by way of Portuguese, ananas or anana. Smoking pipe, sp. pipa from supposed late Latin pipa, port cachimbo from kumbundu. T, sp. te from Min Nan Chinese, port cha from Cantonese. Topic days of the week Unlike the other Romance languages, modern Portuguese does not use the Roman planetary system for the days Monday through Friday. Instead, the weekdays are numerical, and derived from ecclesiastical Latin. 
The word fiera from Latin feria refers to daily Roman Catholic religious celebrations. It is cognate with fiera fair or market as well as with ferias vacation and feriado holiday. In Spanish, the days of the week are all masculine. In Portuguese, the fiera days are feminine, while sábado and domingo are masculine. The form turca fiera in actual usage, the word fiera is often dropped, vu visitar te na segunda, European Portuguese vu te visitar na segunda, Brazilian and European Portuguese I'll visit you on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Grammar Broadly speaking, the grammars of Portuguese and Spanish share many common features. Nevertheless, some differences between them can present hurdles to people acquainted with one and learning the other. <laughs> Gender Spanish has three forms for the singular definite article, el, masculine, la, feminine, and lo, neuter. The last is used with adjectives to form abstract nouns employed in a generic sense, and also to intensify the meaning of adjectives. In Portuguese, there is only o, masculine, and a, feminine. Literary Spanish has also three corresponding third-person pronouns, el, he, ella, she, and elo, it, referring to a broad concept, not a named object, while Portuguese has only ele, masculine, and ela, feminine. The Spanish neuters lo and elo have no plural forms. Some words are masculine in Spanish, but feminine in Portuguese, or vice versa. A common example are nouns ended in aje in Spanish, which are masculine, and their Portuguese cognates ending in agam, which are feminine. For example, Spanish el viaje, the journey, masculine, like French la voyage and Italian il viaggio, corresponds to the Portuguese feminine of viagem. Similarly, el puente, bridge, el dolor, pan, or el arbol, tree, are masculine nouns in modern Spanish, whereas a ponte, a door, and a arbor are feminine in Portuguese. On the other hand, the Spanish feminine la leche, the milk, corresponds to Portuguese o leite, masculine, like French la lait, Italian il latte. Likewise, nariz, nose, is feminine in Spanish and masculine in Portuguese. Some Spanish words can be both masculine and feminine, with different meanings. Both meanings usually exist also in Portuguese, but with one and the same gender, so that they can't be differentiated unless further information is provided. For instance, the word orden order can mean both harmonious arrangement and directive, like its counterparts in English and Portuguese. But the Spanish word is masculine when used with the first meaning, and feminine with the second. Me sorprendio el orden, I was surprised by the order i.e., by how orderly it all was. Me sorprendio la orden. I was surprised by the order i.e., by the directive that was given. In Portuguese, the equivalent word ordem is always feminine. Me surprendeu, surprendeu me a ordem, I was surprised by the order, without additional context, it is impossible to tell which meaning was intended in Portuguese and English, though other words could be substituted, in English, one would likely use orderliness in the first case above rather than order, which would, by itself, suggest the second case. Topic. Use of the definite article In many varieties of Portuguese, personal names are normally preceded by a definite article, a trait also found in Catalan. In Portuguese, this is a relatively recent development, which some Brazilian dialects have not adopted yet, most notably in some states of the Brazilian Northeast. In those dialects of Portuguese that do regularly use definite articles before proper nouns, the article may be omitted for extra formality, or to show distance in a literary narrative. Compare, for example, English, Mary left, Spanish Maria Salio, and Portuguese A Maria Saiu. 
Note, however, that in many Spanish dialects the definite article is used before personal names, thus, La Maria Salio is commonly heard. Portuguese uses the definite article before the names of some cities and almost all countries except relatively new ones, such as Singapura, Singapura Singapore, and those related to Portugal or with which Portugal has historical relationships, even though this is a rough rule and the Portuguese-speaking countries, e.g., a Holanda but Portugal, o Mexico but Angola, a Suecia, but Mocambique. The major exception to the country rule is o Brazil. In Spanish, use of the definite article is optional with some countries, la China, l Japan, la India, la Argentina, l Ecuador, l Peru, l Uruguay, l Paraguay, l Brazil, los Estados Unidos, etc. The same is true with two continents, la Antartida and l Africa, with archipelagos and islands, las Filipinas, las Canarias, las Azores, with some provinces, regions or territories, l Tibet, la Toscana, l Piemont, l Lazio and with some cities, l Cairo, la Valeta. Spanish uses the definite article with all geographical names when they appear with an adjective or modifying phrase, as in the following examples, La España Medieval Medieval Spain, El Puerto Rico Prehispanico Prehispanic Puerto Rico, El Portugal de Salazar Portugal during Salazar's dictatorship, etc. Santiago es la capital de Chile, Spanish Santiago a a capital do Chile, Portuguese Santiago is the capital of Chile, L S de Costa Rica, K esta en América Central, Spanish E L E A da Costa Rica, K Fica na América Central, Portuguese He is from Costa Rica, which is in Central America, Tengo un boleto para los Estados Unidos de América, Spanish Tenho um bilhete para os Estados Unidos da América, Portuguese. I have a ticket to the United States of America, Nueva Delhi no es la ciudad más poblada de la India, Spanish. Nova Delhi now é a cidade mais populosa da India, Portuguese. New Delhi is not the most populous city in India, la Europa medieval pertenecia a monarchus absolutos, Spanish. A Europa medieval pertencia a monarchus absolutos, Portuguese. Medieval Europe belonged to absolute monarchs. Portuguese omits the definite article in stating the time of day unless para as is used. Sun las nueve y cuarto, but also sun nueve y quince or sun nueve quince, Spanish. Sao as no oris e cans, menudos, Portuguese. Parenthesical parts often omitted. It's 9.15, or, it's a quarter past, after 9. In addition, in most dialects of Portuguese the definite article is used before possessive adjectives as it is used in Italian, which is not possible in Spanish. For instance, the sentence This is my brother is este es mi hermano in Spanish, but may be este a o m e u or mao in Portuguese. Nevertheless, in many Brazilian dialects mostly in the Northeast and in casual Brazilian Portuguese the article is not used in sentences such as, este a m e u or mau, although it usually reappears in sentences such as, o m e u or mau esta la. Possessives In Portuguese, possessive adjectives have the same form as possessive pronouns, and they all agree with the gender of the possessed item. In Spanish, the same is true of nuestro, nuestra, our, and vuestro, vuestra, your, plural, but for all other possessives, the pronoun has a longer form that agrees with the gender of the possessed item, while the adjective has a shorter form that does not change for gender. The possessive adjectives are normally preceded by a definite article in continental Portuguese, less so in Brazilian Portuguese, and never in Spanish. The possessive pronouns are preceded by a definite article in all dialects of both languages. See examples in the table below.
Topic: Pronouns. Topic: Object pronouns. In Portuguese, third-person clitic pronouns have special variants used after certain types of verb endings, which does not happen in Spanish. The default object pronouns o, a, os, as change to lo, la, los, los when they follow a verb that ends in r, s or z, and to no, na, nos, nos when they follow a verb that ends in a nasal sound. In Brazilian Portuguese, these forms are uncommon, since the pronoun normally precedes the verb i.e., voce o mantenha in the above example, and third-person subject pronouns are used informally as object pronouns mantenha e -l -e, which has been proved to be present in the language since Galician Portuguese times. However, as it has been considered ungrammatical to begin a sentence with an object pronoun, the above examples are, on rare occasion, used in Brazil as well. <laughs> Clitic personal pronouns European Portuguese differs from Brazilian Portuguese with regard to the placement of clitic personal pronouns, and Spanish is in turn different from both of them. In Spanish, clitic pronouns normally come before the verb, except with the imperative, the infinitive, and the gerund. In verbal periphrases, they precede the auxiliary verb. In spoken Brazilian Portuguese, clitic pronouns normally come before the main verb. In verbal periphrases, they come between the auxiliary verb and the main verb. This occurs even with the imperative, the infinitive, the gerund, and the past participle. In European Portuguese, clitic pronouns may come before or after the verb, depending on the type of clause. In verbal periphrases, they may precede or follow the auxiliary verb, or follow the main verb when this is in the infinitive or the gerund. Topic. Mesoclysis In Portuguese, verbs in the future indicative or conditional tense may be split into morphemes, and the clitic pronoun can be inserted between them, a feature known as mesoclysis. This also occurred in Old Spanish, but no comparable phenomenon takes place in Modern Spanish. Lo trera, Spanish Tra lo a, European Portuguese and formal written Brazilian Portuguese. He, she will bring it, however, these tenses are often replaced with others in the spoken language. Future indicative is sometimes replaced by present indicative, conditional is very often replaced by imperfect indicative. In colloquial language, most Portuguese would state tra loa as vai tres lo, going to bring it, or ira tres lo, will bring it. In Brazilian Portuguese, by tracer ele would be the vernacular use. Topic: <laughs> Combining pronouns in Spanish. The Spanish construction, se lo dio, means either he, she gave it to him, her, or he, she gave it to himself, herself. The expected pattern for the former would be asterisk le lo dio, but such a construction does not exist. This is unique to Spanish. Latin, dedit ili illid dedit ili illum early vulgar Latin did ili illu late vulgar Latin Spanish, dio i l l i l lo dio g e lo diagelo arch, dio cello se lo dio Portuguese, D E U I L L I L O D E U L H E L O D E U Lothis. Modern Spanish makes no distinction between the reflexive pronoun say and the dative personal pronoun say. Note that this did not happen in Old Spanish. Diagelo, he gave it to him. Diocelo, he gave it to himself. The medieval G sound similar to that of French was replaced with S in the 14th-15th centuries cf. Spanish coger, to catch, but cosecha, harvest, port, kohler and colhita, both from lot, colliger.
Topic: Use of stressed pronouns for inanimate subjects. In Spanish, stressed pronouns are never used for inanimate subjects, i.e., things, as opposed to people or animals, not even for clarity or disambiguation purposes. Portuguese knows no such restriction, so that stressed pronouns referring to inanimate subjects can either be used or dropped. Donde están las llaves? Están en la mesa. Spanish pronoun is often dropped. Owned estão as chaves. Elas estão na mesa. Portuguese pronoun is optional. Where are the keys? On the table. English pronoun is not necessarily required. Topic: Second person pronouns. The use of second-person pronouns differs dramatically between Spanish and Portuguese, and even more so between European and Brazilian Portuguese. Spanish tu and usted correspond etymologically to Portuguese tu and voce, but Portuguese has gained a third, even more formal form os senhor s, as sonoras, demoting voce to an equalizing, rather than respectful register. The old familiar forms have been largely lost in the Portuguese-speaking world, as the Portuguese equalizing forms voce or voces have displaced tu to a large extent and vos almost entirely, and even where tu is still used, the second-person verb forms that historically corresponded to it are often replaced by the same third-person forms that are used with voce. In the plural, Portuguese familiar vos is archaic nearly everywhere as with the Old English second singular, thou, and both the subject pronoun and its corresponding second person plural verb forms are generally limited to the Bible, traditional prayers, and spoken varieties of certain regions of rural Portugal. Normally, the familiar and equalizing form is now voces, although in Portugal the second person plural forms are retained for both object and possessive pronouns, e.g., voces e a vossa familia. In the case of Peninsular Spanish, tu, usted, vosotros, and ustedes have more or less kept their original functions, if anything, tu is displacing usted out of common use and usted is coming to be used only for formal situations like o senhor in Portuguese. Latin American Spanish is more complicated, vosotros has fallen out of use in favor of ustedes, but certain regions of Spanish America also use vos as a singular informal pronoun, displacing tu out of its original role to a greater or lesser extent see vasio. Spoken Brazilian Portuguese has dramatically simplified the pronoun system, with voce s tending to displace all other forms. Although a few parts of Brazil still use tu and the corresponding second-person singular verb forms, most areas either use tu with third-person verb forms or increasingly drop tu entirely in favor of voce. This has in turn caused the original third-person possessive seu, sua to shift to primarily second-person use, alongside the appearance of a new third-person possessive deli, dela, plural delas, delas. There, that follows the noun, thus paraphrases such as O caro deli, his car, O caro della, her car. The formal O senhor is also increasingly restricted to highly formal situations, such as that of a storekeeper addressing a customer, or a child or teenager addressing an adult stranger. More conservative in this regard is the Fluminense dialect of Brazilian Portuguese spoken in Rio de Janeiro, Espírito Santo and in the Zona da Mata of the state of Minas Gerais especially its Carioca sociolect. This dialect generally preserves intimate or familiar to, the standard equalizing form voce, and the respectful or formal o senhor, a sonora, together with their related possessives, to such an extent that almost all speakers use these forms, according to context. Nevertheless, a minority of educated speakers correctly conjugates all of the two pronouns formally, otherwise, it is mostly conjugated as voce. 
Standard Portuguese usage has voces and os senhores, as sonoras as plurals of voce and o senhor, a sonora, but the vernacular has also produced new forms with the second person familiar plural function, such as gente, compare a gente as a possible colloquial variation of nos, we, us, that should be conjugated, but commonly is not, as third person singular pessoas pessol meu povo sees i dialect for voces in colloquial pronunciation and galera the latter mainly associated with youth slang it is often said that the gaucho nordestino and amazophonia dialects as well as some sociolects elsewhere such as that in and around the city of santos have preserved too but unlike in fluminense the use of voce is very limited and entirely absent among some speakers and too takes its place in these areas the verb with too is conjugated in the third person form as with voce except among educated speakers in some urban centers such as Porto Alegre and especially Belém See Brazilian Portuguese Topic Verbs Topic to be Spanish and Portuguese have two main copulas, esser and estar. For the most part, the use of these verbs is the same in both languages, but there are a few cases where it differs. The main difference between Spanish and Portuguese is in the interpretation of the concept of state versus essence and in the generalizations one way or another that are made in certain constructions. For instance, esta proibido fumar, Spanish estar. A proibido fumar, Portuguese esser. Smoking is forbidden, la sila esta hecha de madera, Spanish estar. A cadeira é feita de madeira, Portuguese esser. The chair is made of wood, solo uno es correcto, Spanish esser. So um esta correto, Portuguese estar. Only one is correct, also, the use of esser regarding a permanent location is much more accepted in Portuguese. Conversely, estar is often permanent in Spanish regarding a location, while in Portuguese, it implies being temporary or something within the immediate vicinity same house, building, etc. Nuestra oficina queda or esta muy lejos, Spanish quedar, estar. O noso escritorio a or fica muito longe, Portuguese esser, ficar. Our office is very far away, donde esta or queda el aeropuerto. Spanish estar, quedar. O fica or a o aeropuerto. Portuguese ficar, esser. Where is the airport? Because the airport is obviously not anywhere nearby. Ficar is used in Portuguese, most common, though esser can also be used. Secondary copulas are quedar say in Spanish and ficar in Portuguese. Each can also mean to stay or to remain. Me quede dentro de la casa todo el día, Spanish. Fique dentro de casa todo o dia, Portuguese. I stayed inside the house all day. The Spanish sentence using the reflexive form of the verb quedarse implies that staying inside the house was voluntary, while Portuguese and English are quite ambiguous on this matter without any additional context. See also the next section. Both Spanish quedar say and Portuguese ficar can mean become. Mi abuela se esta quedando sorda, Spanish. A mina avo esta ficando sorda, Brazilian Portuguese and some dialects of European Portuguese. A mina avo esta a ficar sorda, European Portuguese. My grandmother is becoming deaf. Topic: Reflexive verbs. Reflexive verbs are somewhat more frequent in Spanish than in Portuguese, especially with actions relating to parts of the body. Guillermo se quebró la pierna jugando a la pelota, Spanish. 
O Guilherme Cabru a Perna Gigando Bola. Brazilian Portuguese. O Guilherme Partiu a Perna a Jogar a Bola, European Portuguese. William broke his leg playing football. Topic. To like The Portuguese and Spanish verbs for expressing liking are similar in form gostar and gustar respectively, but different in their arrangement of arguments. Arguments in linguistics are expressions that enable a verb to complete its meaning. Expressions of liking typically require two arguments, one a person who likes something, sometimes called the experiencer, and two something that the person likes, sometimes called the theme. Portuguese and Spanish as well as English assign different grammatical cases to these arguments, as shown in the following table. The Portuguese sentence can be translated literally as I take satisfaction from the music, while the Spanish corresponds to to me it is pleasing the music. It is also possible in Spanish to express it as yo gusto de la música, although this use has become antiquated. Topic auxiliary verbs with the perfect in Spanish. The compound perfect is constructed with the auxiliary verb haber. Yo ya habia comido cuando mi madre volvió. Spanish imperfect form of haber. Eu ya camera cuando a mina me voltu. Portuguese pluperfect inherited from Latin. Eu ya tinha comido cuando a mina me voltu. Portuguese imperfect form of ter. Eu ya havia comido cuando a mina me voltu. Portuguese imperfect form of hever. I had already eaten when my mother returned. Topic: <laughs> Imperfect subjunctive versus pluperfect indicative. A class of false friends between the two languages is composed of the verb forms with endings containing ra, such as cantara, canteras, cantaramos, and so on. Spanish has two forms for the imperfect subjunctive, one with endings in se and another with endings in ra e.g., cantes, cantara were I to sing, which are usually interchangeable. In Portuguese, only cantas has this value. Cantara is employed as a pluperfect indicative, i.e., the equivalent to Spanish habia cantado, I had sung. Although there is a strong tendency to use a verb phrase instead in the spoken language, like in Spanish and English, tinha cantado, the simple tense is still frequent in literature. Topic: Present perfect In European Spanish, as in English, the present perfect is normally used to talk about an action initiated and completed in the past, which is still considered relevant or influential in the present moment. In Portuguese and Latin American Spanish, the same meaning is conveyed by the simple preterite, as in the examples below. No, gracias. Ya he sonado, Spanish, Spain, present perfect. No, gracias. Ya cine, Spanish, Latin America, preterite. Now, abrigado. Ya gente, Portuguese, preterite. No, thank you. I have already dined, present perfect. He ido a España dos veces, Spanish, Spain, present perfect. Fui a España dos veces, Spanish, Latin America, preterite. Fui a España duas veces, Portuguese, preterite. I have been to Spain twice, present perfect. Ha oido usted las últimas noticias, señor. Spanish, Spain, present perfect. Oyo usted las últimas noticias, señor. Spanish, Latin America, preterite. O senhor ovio as últimas noticias. Portuguese, preterite. 
Have you heard the latest news, sir? Present perfect, Portuguese normally uses the present perfect Friderito Perfeito Composto for speaking of an event that began in the past, was repeated regularly up to the present, and could keep happening in the future. See the contrast with Spanish in the following example. He pensado en pedro matrimonio, Spanish, present perfect. I have thought of asking her, him, indirect object, to marry me, the thought has occurred to me at least once, present perfect. Tenho pensado em pedi le em casamento, Portuguese, present perfect. I have been thinking of asking her, direct object, to marry me, present perfect continuous, as this example suggests, the Portuguese present perfect is often closer in meaning to the English present perfect continuous. See also Spanish verbs, contrasting the preterite and the perfect. Topic. Personal infinitive Portuguese, uniquely among the major Romance languages, has acquired a personal infinitive, which can be used as an alternative to a subordinate clause with a finite verb in the subjunctive. A recepcionista pedio para esperarmos, Portuguese, personal infinitive. A recepcionista pedio que esperasemos, Portuguese, imperfect subjunctive. La recepcionista nos pedio que esperarmos, asperasimos, Spanish, imperfect subjunctive. The receptionist asked for us to wait, literal personal infinitive translation. The receptionist asked that we wait, literal Portuguese imperfect subjunctive translation the Portuguese perfect form of the personal infinitive corresponds to one of several possible Spanish finite verbs. Alguém nos acuso de termos rubido uma caneta, Portuguese Alguém nos acuso de haber rubado un bolígrafo, Spanish Somebody accused us of having stolen a pen. On some occasions, the personal infinitive can hardly be replaced by a finite clause and corresponds to a different structure in Spanish and English. O habito de fumar's a janela a desagradable, Portuguese, using personal infinitive. Literally, the habit of you smoking at the window is unpleasant. O teu habito de fumar a janela a desagradable, Portuguese, using impersonal infinitive. Literally, the your habit of smoking at the window is unpleasant. Tu habito de fumar junto a una ventana es desagradable, Spanish, your habit of smoking close to a window is unpleasant. The personal infinitive is not used in counterfactual situations, as these require either the future subjunctive or the imperfect subjunctive. If we were, had been rich, is se fossemos ricos, not asterisk se sermos ricos. Also, it is conjugated the same as the future subjunctive see next section, provided the latter is not irregular esser, estar, ter, etc. The personal infinitive is never irregular, though the circumflex accent may be dropped in writing on expanded forms such as poor. In the first and third person singular, the personal infinitive appears no different from the unconjugated infinitive. A bom eu, e l e s per ar um bocadinho, Portuguese. It is good that I, he waits a bit. The above rules also apply whenever the subjects of the two clauses are the same, but independent of each other. Para chegarmos cito, temos, teremos que nos oppressor, Portuguese, personal infinitive. Para que lleguemos temprano, necessitamos oppressoranos, Spanish, present subjunctive. For us to arrive early, we will need to hurry. Para chegarmos cedo, tenhamos, teriamos que nos oppressor, Portuguese, personal infinitive. Para que ligaremos, llegasemos temprano, necesitaríamos oppressoranos, Spanish, imperfect subjunctive. For us to arrive early, we would need to hurry. As shown, the personal infinitive can be used at times to replace both the impersonal infinitive and the subjunctive. Spanish has no such alternative. Topic: Future subjunctive. 
The future subjunctive, now virtually obsolete in Spanish, continues in use in both written and spoken Portuguese. It is used in subordinate clauses referring to a hypothetical future event or state, either adverbial clauses usually introduced by say if or quando when or adjective clauses that modify nouns referring to a hypothetical future entity. Spanish, in the analogous if clauses, uses the present indicative, and in the quando and adjective clauses uses the present subjunctive. Say EU for eleito presidente, mudare a lei, Portuguese. Se yo soy, also fuer, elegido presidente, cambiare la lei, Spanish. If I am elected president, I will change the law, quando fors mes velho, comprenderas, Portuguese. Quando sees, also fueres, mayor, comprenderas, Spanish. When you are older, you'll understand, dar se a, se dara o premio a primera pessoa que disser a resposta correta, Portuguese Se dara el premio a la primera persona que diga also dijere, la resposta correcta, Spanish The prize will be given to the first person who says the right answer. Topic. Irregular verbs A number of irregular verbs in Portuguese change the main vowel to indicate differences between first and third person singular, fiz I did versus fez he did, pewed I could versus pode he could, fui I was versus foi he was, tiv I had versus tiv he had, etc. These vowel differences stem from vowel raising metaphony, triggered historically by the final I of the first person singular in Latin. Spanish maintains such a difference only in fui I was versus few he was. In all other cases, one of the two vowels has been regularized throughout the conjugation and a new third person ending o adopted, heis I did versus hizo he did, pewed I could versus pudo he could, etc. Contrarily, Spanish maintains many more irregular forms in the future and conditional, saldre I will leave, pondre I will put, vendre I will come, dure I will say, etc. Portuguese has only three, ferre I will do, diare I will say, ture I will carry. Portuguese drops e in irregular. Third person singular present indicative forms after z and r, according to phonological rules, faz he does, dis he says, quer he wants, etc. Spanish has restored e by analogy with other verbs, hace he does, dice he says, quiere he wants, etc. The same type of analogy accounts for fiz versus heis I did in the past tense. In nouns such as pause, peace, lose, light, amor, love, etc., e was dropped in both languages and never restored. Topic: Prepositions. Topic: Contractions. In Spanish the prepositions a to and de of from form contractions with a following masculine singular definite article el, the, a plus el greater than al, and de plus el greater than del. This kind of contraction is much more extensive in Portuguese, involving the prepositions a to, de of from, m in, and por for with articles and demonstratives regardless of number or gender. All four of these prepositions join with the definite article, as shown in the following table. 1. These Portuguese contractions include some potential false friends for the reader of Spanish, such as no port in the SP, no, not, and dos port of the SP. 2.2 in European Portuguese, A is pronounced, while A is pronounced a. Both are generally a in most of Brazil, although in some accents such as Carioca and Florianopolitano there may be distinction. Additionally, the prepositions de and m combine with the demonstrative adjectives and pronouns as shown below. 
the neuter demonstrative pronouns isto, this, iso, aquilo, that likewise combine with de and m, thus, disto, nisto, etc. And the preposition a combines with the distal demonstratives, those that begin with a to form aquile, aquilo, etc. The Portuguese contractions mentioned thus far are obligatory. Contractions can also be optionally formed from m and de with the indefinite article um, uma, uns, umas, resulting in num, numa, dum, duma, etc. and from the third-person pronouns ele, ela, els, elas, resulting in nela, nila, deli, dela, etc. Other optional contractions include de with a key greater than de key from here. The Spanish con with com in Portuguese combines with the prepositional pronouns me, ti, and si to form conmigo, contigo, consigo, with me, with you, with him, herself. In Portuguese this process not only applies to the pronouns mim, ti, and si giving comigo, contigo, and consigo, but also is extended to nos and, in those varieties which use it, vos, producing conosco, conosco in Brazilian Portuguese and convosco. Topic. Personal. A. Spanish employs a preposition, the so-called personal a, before the direct object of a transitive verb except tenor when it denotes a specific person's, or domestic pet, thus veo a Juan I see John, hemos invitado a los estudiantes we've invited the students In Portuguese, personal a is virtually non-existent, except before deus God, lovar a deus to praise God, amar a deus to love God. Topic. I R A versus I R Para Quite common in both languages are the prepositions a, which often translates as to, and para, which often translates as for. However, European Portuguese and Spanish distinguish between going somewhere for a short while versus a longer stay, especially if it is an intended destination, in the latter case using para instead of a. While there is no specified duration of stay before a European Portuguese speaker must switch prepositions, a implies one will return sooner, rather than later, relative to the context. This distinction is not made in English and Brazilian Portuguese. In Spanish the distinction is not made if the duration is given in the context maybe implicitly, and in this case a is generally preferred. Fui al mercado cerca de mi casa, Spanish Fui al mercado perto de, da mina casa, fui para o mercado perto de, da mina casa, European and Brazilian Portuguese I went to the market near my house, temporary displacement El Presidente Anterior Fu Exiliado a Portugal, Spanish O Presidente Anterior Foi Exiliado para Portugal, European and Brazilian Portuguese The former president was exiled to Portugal, permanent, or more lasting displacement Note, though, in the first example, para could be used in Portuguese if in contrast to a very brief period of time. Now fico muito tempo, so um minuto. Tenho que, de ir para o mercado, Portuguese. I can't stay long, only a minute. I have to go to the market, pending task or appointment in informal, non-standard Brazilian Portuguese, m in its original form or combined with a given article in a contraction, yielding no, na, numa, etc., often replaces the preposition a from standard Portuguese. Vu na padaria, non-standard Brazilian Portuguese. Vu a padaria, standard Portuguese. I'm going to the bakery. Fui numa festa ontem, non-standard Brazilian Portuguese. Fui a uma festa ontem, standard Portuguese. I went to a party yesterday. Such a construction is not used in Spanish or in European Portuguese. 
In Portuguese the preposition até can also be used when the duration of the stay is expected to be short or when there is a specific reason for going somewhere. In Spanish hasta has the same meaning and function. Vou até a praia. Voy hasta la playa. I'm going to the beach. Topic: Hacia and para. Spanish has two prepositions of direction: para for including headed for a destination and hacia toward, not necessarily implying arrival. Of them, only para exists in Portuguese, covering both meanings. Este regalo es para ti, Spanish. Este presente é para ti, Portuguese. This gift is for you, aquel, sa avión va hacia Brasilia, Spanish. Aquele avião voa para Brasilia, Portuguese. That airplane is flying toward Brasilia, colloquially, para is often reduced in both languages, to pa in Spanish, and to pra sometimes written pra and this form may be used in literature or pa only in slang in Portugal and Rio de Janeiro, and not permitted in writing in Portuguese. Portuguese pra, in turn, may join with the definite article, pra plus o greater than pro bp or pro ep, pra plus a greater than pra bp or pra ep, etc. In reference to the slang option pa, these become, pa plus o greater than po, pa plus a greater than pa, etc. Going to future. Both languages have a construction similar to the English going to future. Spanish includes the preposition a between the conjugated form of ir to go and the infinitive vamos a cantar we're going to sing or let's sing present tense of ir plus a plus infinitive. Usually, in Portuguese, there is no preposition between the helping verb and the main verb, vamos cantar, present tense of ir plus infinitive. This also applies when the verb is in other tenses. Er yo iba a leer el libro, pero no tuve la oportunidad, Spanish. Antem eu e a leer o libro, mas now tive oportunidade, Portuguese. Yesterday I was going to read the book, but never had the chance. Other differences in preposition usage While as a rule the same prepositions are used in the same contexts in both languages, there are many exceptions. Nuestros gastos de energía. Spanish Os nosos gastos com de energia Portuguese. Our energy expenses. Voy a votar por Juan. Spanish. Vou votar em no João. Portuguese. I'm going to vote for John. Topic: Orthography. Alphabet The traditional Spanish alphabet had 28 letters, while the Portuguese had 23. Modern versions of recent years added K and W found only in foreign words to both languages. Portuguese also added Y for loanwords. With the reform in 1994 by the Tenth Congress of the Association of Spanish Language Academies, Spanish alphabetization now follows the same pattern as that of other major West European languages. Prior to this date, however, the digraphs ch and ll were independently alphabetized. For example, the following surnames would be put in this order, Cervantes, Contreras, Cruz, Chavez, de Villa. Many Spanish dictionaries and other reference material still exist using the pre-reform rule of alphabetization. 
Current Spanish Alphabet Spanish Alphabet Reform of 1994 a B C D E F G H I J K L M N U O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z Digraphs C H L L R R G U K U Current Portuguese Alphabet, Portuguese Language Orthographic Agreement of 1990, Introducing K, W and Y a B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z Digraphs C H L H N H R R G U K U S S C C C C S C S K X C X S S C in Latin American Spanish is not called a digraph, however it is a single sound as in Brazilian Portuguese. Also Spanish has taken shish from English as a lone sound, e.g., Sherpa, show, flash. Brazilian Portuguese uses the trigraph TCH, T, for loanwords, e.g., Chao, Chao, T Checo, Czech, Republica T Checa, Czech Republic, Che, Che, this latter is regional, etc. European Portuguese normally replace the trigraph TCH with CH, Chao, Checo, Republica Checa, etc. Both Spanish and Portuguese use ZZ, TS, never as DZ. This sequence appears only in loanwords from Japanese, e.g., Edzuki, for some Italian loanwords, but in Portuguese may sometimes not be pronounced as affricate, but having an epithetic I, or e.g., SP, and port pizza, pizza, SP, and port paparazzo, paparazzo etc. Spanish also utilizes TZ, TS, for Basque, Catalan and Nahuatl loanwords, and TL, T, or TL, for Nahuatl loanwords, e.g., Ertzainza, Quetzal, Xoloetzquintal, Tlaxcala, etc. Portuguese utilizes TS for German, originarily Z, and Japanese loanwords. Question and exclamation marks Only in Spanish do interrogatives and exclamations use the question mark or exclamation point respectively at the beginning of a sentence. The same punctuation marks are used, but these are inverted. This prepares the reader in advance for either a question or exclamation type of sentence. Interrogative, cuantos años tienes? Spanish exclamation cuidado con el perro Spanish on the other hand in Portuguese a person reading aloud lengthy sentences from an unfamiliar text may have to scan ahead to check if what at first appears to be a statement is actually a question otherwise it would be too late to enable proper voice inflection Neither language has the equivalent of the auxiliary verb to do, which is often used to begin a question in English. Both Spanish and English can place the verb before the subject noun to indicate a question, though this is uncommon in Portuguese, and almost unheard of in Brazil. In fact, most yes, no questions in Portuguese are written the same as a statement except for the final question mark. Spanish, tiene usted una medida de cual es su exposición a estos riesgos, y esta usted confiado de que su organización está minimizando el impacto de los mismos sobre sus accionistas, equipo de trabajo y otros grupos interesados, Portuguese, voce tem idea de cual a sua exposición a esos riscos, e tem confianca que a sua organización esta minimizando os impactos resultantes, nos seus asianistas, funcionarios e outros interesados, English, do you have a measure of what your exposure is to these risks, and are you confident that your organization is minimizing their impact on your shareholders, staff, and other interested parties, aside from changes of punctuation in written language, in speech, converting any of the above examples from a question to a statement would involve changes of both intonation and syntax in English and Spanish, but intonation only in Portuguese. Topic. Different spellings for similar sounds 
The palatal consonants are spelled differently in the two languages. The symbols LL and N tilde are etymological in Spanish, as the sounds they represent are often derived from Latin LL and NN. For those positions, Portuguese has simple L and N, CF. Rodilla, Rodella, Peña, Peña. The Portuguese digraphs LH and NH were adopted from Occitan, as poetry of the troubadours was the most important influence on Portuguese literature up until the 14th century. King Denis of Portugal, who established Portuguese instead of Latin as the official language, was an admirer of the poetry of the troubadours and a poet himself. Examples include names such as Port. Minho sp. Minho and Magalhães sp. Magalhães. The letter Y was used in Portuguese from the 16th to the early 20th century in Greek loans, much as in English, e.g., psychologia, modern psychologia, psychology. The orthographic reform in 1911 officially replaced it with I. The corresponding sound can be regarded as an allophone of the vowel I in both languages. Compare sp, ray, king, mayor, larger, greater, elder with port, ray, king, mayor, larger, greater. The exact pronunciation of these three consonants varies somewhat with dialect. The table indicates only the most common sound values in each language. In most Spanish dialects, the consonants written ll and y have come to be pronounced the same way, a sound merger known as yismo. A similar phenomenon can be found in some dialects of Brazilian Portuguese e.g., muie for muller, woman, but it is much less widespread than in Spanish. The Portuguese letter C cedilla, C cedilla based on a Visigothic form of the letter Z. In Portuguese it is used before a, o, and u, including nasals, and never at the beginning or end of any word. It always represents the soft C sound, namely S. In modern Spanish, it has been replaced by Z. Example, calzado SP, calcado port, footwear. Topic. Correspondences between word endings Various word endings are consistently different in the two languages. Spanish N corresponds to Portuguese M when in word final position e.g., Spanish, jardín, algún, Portuguese, jardim, algum. In Portuguese, word or syllable final M and N indicate nasalization of the previous vowel, e.g., som, so, sound see phonology below. In the plural, M is replaced with an N Spanish, jardines, algunos, Portuguese, jardins, algans, that is because in these cases the M is not in word final position anymore. Notice, some rare learned words in Portuguese and Spanish may also have a word final N e.g., Portuguese abdomen, 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 and M e.g., Spanish tandem, tandem, respectively. Common exceptions to the above rule concern the Spanish noun endings. An and año, which normally correspond to ao or a in Portuguese, Iran versus Irao, EP, Ira, BP, Iran, Hermano versus Irmão, brother, and Huerfano versus Orfeo, orphan M. Ana, which corresponds to a Hermana versus Irma, sister, Manana versus Manha, morning, Huerfana versus Orfa, orphan F. On, Sion or Sion, Sion, which usually correspond to Ao, Sao or Si, Sao, Sao or Sao, Melon versus Malau, Melon, Opsion versus Opsao, Option, Correction versus Core, C, Sao, Correction, Pension versus Pensao, Pension, or Admission versus Admissao, Admission. On or an, which corresponds to ao in most monosyllables, Sun versus Sao, they are, Tan versus Dao, as, so. The singular noun or adjective endings an and on in Spanish both usually correspond to Portuguese ao, and likewise the Spanish ending año often corresponds to Portuguese ao, although there are also many Portuguese words ending in año, including gentilics such as cubano, boliviano, etc. 
The plurals of the Portuguese words in ao, however, generally preserve the historical distinctions. Portuguese aos, as, and os generally correspond to Spanish anos, ains, and ones, respectively. Aos, as in mau per meter aos, Spanish mano, manos, English hands. As, as in capital, capitais, Spanish capitan, capitanes, English captains. Os, as in Malau, Malos, Spanish melon, melons, English melons. Notable exceptions to the above rule: Verão, verões, Spanish veranos, English summers. Volcão, volcões, Spanish volcan, volcanes, English volcano. Anchao, which allows the three plural forms: anchaos, anchies, and ancios, Spanish ancianos, English elders. Guardiao, which allows the three plural forms, guardaos, guardias and guardios Spanish guardian, guardianes, English guardian. Vilao, which allows the three plural forms, vilaos, viles and vilos Spanish vilano, vilanos, English villain. Joao, chuis Spanish Juan, Juans, English John. This plural can be seen in words such as Joao de Barro, Chuiz de Barro, Red Ovenbird. The third person plural endings of the preterite indicative tense are spelled with on in Spanish, pensaron, viveron, they thought, they lived, but with am in Portuguese, pensarum, viverum. In Portuguese words ending in l form their plurals by dropping l and adding is ice when final unstressed ill, caracol, caracua Spanish caracol s, English snails, fossil, faces Spanish fossil s, English easy. In Spanish, adjectives and nouns ending in z form their plurals by replacing z with c ces, e.g., feroz, feroces Portuguese feroz s, English ferocious, vez, veses Portuguese vez s, English times. Another conspicuous difference is the use of z in Spanish versus s in Portuguese at the end of unstressed syllables, especially when the consonant is the last letter in a word. A few examples, Alvarez, Fernandez, Suarez, Izquierda, Mesquino, Lapis Spanish Alvarez, Fernandez, Sores, Esquerda, Mesquino, Lapis Portuguese Other correspondences between word endings are Dad s or tad s Spanish and dades Portuguese, as in bondad s versus bondades goodness s and libertad s versus libertades liberty ises. The word ending zades is also found in Portuguese, e.g. amazades Spanish amistad s English friendships. U D S Spanish and U D E S Portuguese, as in virtude s versus virtudes virtue. Bless Spanish and vel ice Portuguese, as in amables versus amable, amaves amiable. Jis Spanish and gem per nanosecond Portuguese, as in linguajes versus linguagem, linguagens, languages. Aso Spanish and aso Portuguese, as in escasso versus escasso, scarce. Eso Spanish and eso Portuguese, as in espesso versus espesso, thick. ESA Spanish and ESA or ESA Portuguese as in Condesa versus Condesa Countess and Inglesa versus Inglesa Englishwoman EZA Spanish and ICA or EZA Portuguese as in Pereza versus Preguica laziness and Naturaleza versus Natureza nature EZ Spanish and ICE and EZ Portuguese, as in idiote versus idiotice idiocy. There are unpredictable exceptions in Portuguese, e.g., estupidez stupidity and timidez versus timidez shyness. IZAR Spanish and IZAR or ISAR Portuguese, as in realizar versus realizar to realize, realize and analyzer versus analizar to analyse, analyse. Notice there are also some Spanish verbs that in ISAR, e.g., avisar warn, pesquisar research, etc. Brazilian Portuguese uses an alternative word ending in ISAR in some exceptional cases, e.g., aterrasar, alunasar, European Portuguese adera. A lunar, Spanish aterrazar, a lunazar, English landing, moon landing. 
Azar Spanish and Akar Portuguese, Aminasar versus Amiakar, Threaten Anza Spanish and Anca Portuguese, Esperanza versus Esperanza, Hope Encia Spanish and Ensa or Encia Portuguese, as in Diferencia versus Diferenza difference and Ocurrencia versus Ocurrencia occurrence in Spanish there are few exceptional words ending in Enza, e.g., Vergüenza shame ICIA Spanish and ICA or ISHA Portuguese, as in Justicia versus Justica justice and Malicia versus Malicia malice. Izo Spanish and Ico Portuguese, as in Movedizo versus Movedico movable. Miento or Mento Spanish and Mento Portuguese, as in Sentimiento versus Sentimento feeling, sentiment and Reglamento versus Regulamento rules, regulations. Asimo Spanish and Isimo Portuguese, as in Fidelissimo versus Fidelissimo most loyal. Topic. Accentuation and nasalization Both languages use diacritics to mark the stressed syllable of a word whenever it is not otherwise predictable from spelling. Since Spanish does not differentiate between mid-open and mid-close vowels and nasal vowels, it uses only one accent, the acute. Portuguese usually uses the acute accent, but also uses the circumflex accent on the mid-close vowels E circumflex and O circumflex and the stressed always nasal in Brazil A circumflex. Although the Spanish Y can be either a consonant or a vowel, as a vowel it never takes an accent. At the end of a word, the Portuguese diphthong I is the equivalent of the Spanish I, however, I can have an accent on the I acute to break the diphthong into two separate vowels, e.g., asai, three syllables. Without the accent, as in Spanish, the last syllable would be a diphthong, Paraguay Portuguese, and Paraguay Spanish Paraguay. Portuguese nasal vowels occur before N and M see phonology below without an accent mark, as these consonants are not fully pronounced in such cases. The tilde, tilde is only used on nasal diphthongs such as ao, w, and o, oj, plus the final a tilde, which replaces the m ending, as the latter is reserved for verbs, e.g., amana am, tomorrow. Initial and middle, vowel plus n plus consonant except h, p or b, antecedent, garanganka, mundo, enphase Initial and middle, vowel plus m plus bilabial consonant p or b, kakamba, imprego, supampa, pomba, penumbra Final, vowel plus m, physerum, m, ruum, bomb, algum except for learned words, e.g., abdomen, abdomen, hyphen, etc. These do not alter the rules for stress, though note endings im, ins and um, uns are stressed, as are their non-nasal counterparts see below. A couple of two-letter words consist of only the nasal vowel, m and um. Phonetic vowel nasalization occurs in Spanish, Vowels may get slightly nasalized in contact with nasal consonants, but it is not phonemically distinctive. In Portuguese, on the other hand, vowel nasalization is distinctive, and therefore phonemic, poa, pos, or podge, because versus pose, podge, s, or podge, you put. Portuguese changes vowel sounds with and without accents marks. Unaccented o, u, o, and e, i, e. Acute accented o acute, and e acute, or circumflex accented o circumflex, o, and e, e. Thus, nose ns or n we versus nose nus or nu us, avo avo grandfather versus avo a v grandmother, say c or s itself, himself, herself reflexive pronoun versus say s seat, headquarters versus say say to be second person imperative. Spanish pronunciation makes no such distinction. The grave accent backquote, is also used in Portuguese to indicate the contraction of the preposition a to with a few words beginning with the vowel a, but not to indicate stress. 
In other cases, it is the combination of the preposition and the feminine definite article, in other words, the equivalent of Allah to the in Spanish. As is used for the plural Allah in Spanish. A prep plus as def article the equals a s to the a prep plus Achilles Aquilas pron that equals Achilles Aquilas underline stressed syllable to that a prep plus Aquilo pron n that equals Aquilo to that the diaresis or trema is used in Spanish to indicate u is pronounced in the sequence gu e g desagüe de sa as the Portuguese grave accent, the trema does not indicate stress. In Brazilian Portuguese it was also used for the digraphs gu and cu for the same purpose as Spanish e.g. Former BP spelling asterisk quinquenio kw quayu, ep quinquenio kw quinju five-year period, however since the implementation of the Portuguese language orthographic agreement in Brazil, the trema was abolished current BP spelling quinquenio kw quayu, and its usage was restricted to some loanwords e.g., mulleriano malarian. The accentuation rules including those of predictable stress of Portuguese and Spanish are similar but not identical. Discrepancies are especially pervasive in words that contain i or u in their last syllable. Note the Portuguese diphthongs a and o are the approximate Spanish equivalent of e and o respectively, but any word ending with these diphthongs is by default stressed on its final syllable. Compare the following pairs of cognates, where the stress falls on the same syllable in both languages. Semivowel-vowel sequences are treated differently in both languages when it comes to accentuation rules. A sequence of a semivowel adjacent to a vowel is by default assumed to be read as a diphthong part of the same syllable in Spanish, whereas it is by default assumed to be read as a hiatus belonging to different syllables in Portuguese. For both languages, accentuation rules consistently indicate something other than the default. A consequence of this is that words that are pronounced alike in both languages are written according to different accentuation rules. Some examples Emergencia Spanish, Emergencia Portuguese Emergency Tolerancia Spanish, Tolerancia Portuguese Tolerance Adacia Spanish Adacia Portuguese Adas Ocio Spanish Ocio Portuguese Leisure Continuo Spanish Continuo Portuguese Continuous Continuo Spanish Continuo Portuguese I continue another consequence though less common is that some words are written exactly or almost exactly the same in both languages but the stress falls on different syllables Democracia Spanish rising diphthong at the end Democracia Portuguese the stress on C breaks the diphthong democracy Policia Spanish the stress on C breaks the diphthong Policia Portuguese police Topic <laughs> phonology Although the vocabularies of Spanish and Portuguese are similar, the two languages differ phonologically from each other, very likely because of the stronger Celtic substratum in Portuguese. Phonetically Portuguese bears similarities to French and to Catalan while the phonetics of Spanish are more comparable to those of Sardinian and Sicilian. Portuguese has a significantly larger phonemic inventory than Spanish. This may partially explain why it is generally not very intelligible to Spanish speakers despite the lexical similarity between the two languages. One of the main differences between the Spanish and Portuguese pronunciation are the vowel sounds. Standard Spanish has a basic vowel phonological system, with five phonemic vowels, a, e, i, o, u. Phonetic nasalization occurs in Spanish for vowels occurring between nasal consonants or when preceding a syllable final nasal consonant, n, and per meter, but it is not distinctive as in Portuguese. 
Dialectally, there are Spanish dialects with a greater number of vowels, with some as Murcian and Eastern Andalusian reaching up to 8 to 10 vowel sounds. On the other hand, Portuguese has 7 to 9 oral vowels, a asterisk, e, asterisk, i, o, u, is closer to in Portugal, while the near close near back unrounded vowel also rendered as or is only found in European Portuguese plus five phonemic nasal vowels, e, i, o, u, when preceding an omitted syllable final nasal n and m or when is marked with a tilde, tilde, a tilde and o tilde. This appears to be, similarly to French, a Celtic phonological adaptation to Latin. Portuguese, as Catalan, uses vowel height, contrasting stressed and unstressed reduced vowels. Moreover, Spanish has two semivowels as allophones, j, w, while Portuguese has four, two oral i, tilde, u, tilde, and two nasalized glides j, tilde, w, tilde non-syllabic near-close vowels, as those of most English speech, are allophones of the glides in the Brazilian dialects where near-closeds are used. The following considerations are based on a comparison of standard versions of Spanish and Portuguese. Apparent divergence of the information below from anyone's personal pronunciation may indicate one's idiolect or dialect diverges from the mentioned standards. Information on Portuguese phonology is adapted from Celso Pedro Luft, Novo Manual de Portuguese, 1971, and information on Spanish phonology adapted from Manuel Seco, Gramática Essencial del Español, 1994. Comparing the phonemic inventory of the two languages, a noticeable divergence stands out. First, Standard Portuguese has more phonemes than Spanish. Also, each language has phonemes that are not shared by the other. Topic: <inaudible> Early phonetic divergence. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Vowels. Spanish and Portuguese have been diverging for over a thousand years. One of the most noticeable early differences between them concerned the result of the stressed vowels of Latin. One the vowels, a, uh, and, uh, occur largely in complementary distribution. Two this diphthong has been reduced to the monophthong, o, oh, in many dialects of modern Portuguese. As vowel length ceased to be distinctive in the transition from Latin to Romance, the stressed vowels e and o became ie and u in Spanish whenever they were short Latin Petra Spanish Piedra Stone, Latin Mori Tvr Spanish Muer He dies. Similar diphthongizations can be found in other Romance languages French Pierre, Italian Pietra, Romanian Piatra, French Mert, Italian Muore, Romanian Moor, but in Galician Portuguese these vowels underwent a qualitative change instead Portuguese, Galician Pedra, Moor, becoming lower, as also happened with short i and short u in stressed syllables. The classical Latin vowels, e, e, and, o, o, were correspondingly lowered in Spanish and turned into diphthongs, je, and, we. In Spanish, short e and o and long e and o merged into mid-vowels, e, and, o, while in Portuguese these vowels stayed as close mid, e, and, o, and open mid, and, as in vulgar Latin. Portuguese has five phonemic nasal vowels, e, i, o, u, which, according to historical linguistics, arose from the assimilation of the nasal consonants per meter, and, n, often at the end of syllables. Syllable final m and n are still written down to indicate nasalization, even though they are no longer fully pronounced, that is, either to the power of n before obstruents or alighted completely. In other cases, nasal vowels are marked with a tilde a, o. Not all words containing vowel plus n have the nasal sound, as the subsequent letter must be a consonant for this to occur, e.g., an l, n with ring oral, non-nasal versus anca, k, hip nasal. 
However, in some Brazilian dialects, most vowels including the allophones present only in unstressed environment have nasal allophones before one of the nasal consonants per meter, n, followed by another vowel. In other Brazilian dialects, only stressed vowels can be nasalized this way. In European Portuguese, nasalization is absent in this environment. The Portuguese digraph O, pronounced usually as the diphthong ao, but sometimes as a monophthong o, corresponds to the final O of Spanish R verbs in the preterite tense, e.g., Spanish descanso and Portuguese descanso. He, she rested. The Spanish irregular verb forms in oi, e.g., doi, I give, estoy, I am, soy, I am, voy, I go. Correspond to Portuguese forms in o, e.g., do, esto, su, vu. But in some other words, conversely, Spanish o corresponds to Portuguese oi, e.g., Spanish cosa, Portuguese coisa, thing, Spanish oro, gold, Portuguese usually oro, but sometimes oiro. Stressed vowel alternations may occur in Portuguese, but not in Spanish. Topic. Unstressed vowels The history of the unstressed vowels in Spanish and Portuguese is not as well known as that of the stressed vowels, but some points are generally agreed upon. Spanish has the five short vowels of classical Latin, a, e, i, o, u. It has also two semivowels, j and w, that appear in diphthongs, but these can be considered allophones of i and u, respectively. The pronunciation of the unstressed vowels does not differ much from that of stressed vowels. Unstressed, non-syllabic, e, o, and a can be reduced to w and complete elision in some dialects, e.g., poetiza pw, e, tisa poet f, linea lina line, ahorita o, ida now. The system of seven oral vowels of Vulgar Latin has been fairly well preserved in Portuguese, as in the closely related Galician language. In Portuguese, unstressed vowels have been more unstable, both diachronically across time and synchronically between dialects, producing new vowel sounds. The vowels written a, e and o are pronounced in different ways according to several factors, most notably whether they are stressed, and whether they occur in the last syllable of a word. The basic paradigm is shown in the following table, it has some exceptions. One always nasalized in this environment in most dialects, that is, tilde. Two mostly in northeastern Brazil. In some other dialects, including those of northern Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Espírito Santo, Minas Gerais, and the Brazilian Federal District, this also occurs if the stressed vowel is open rather than closed, or rather than e or o, due to vowel harmony. Three only in some dialects, the first mainly in the area including and surrounding Lisbon not present in much of northern and insular Portugal, as in Brazil, and the latter mainly in some hinterland northern Portuguese accents not present in southern and insular Portugal, as in Brazil. Brazilian unstressed vowel allophones vary according to the geographical region of the country. Near close and unstressed close mid e, o, are found in southern and western accents, where postvocalic r has a soft allophone, a flap, a coronal approximant, or a rhotic vowel, and postvocalic sibilants written s, x, and z in native words are always alveolar s, z. Meanwhile, these close allophones do not occur in the northern and eastern accents, where postvocalic r has a hard allophone velar, uvular, or glottal and postvocalic sibilants may be, consistently or not, post-alveolar In the accents where postvocalic sibilants are always post-alveolar, such as those of Florianopolis and Rio de Janeiro, or in the accents influenced by them, any unstressed, a tilde, e, tilde, and o, tilde, may be raised, like in Portugal, to, i, and, u, respectively. 
While this is true of all colloquial BP, it is especially characteristic of the latter dialects. This increased vowel reduction is also present in accents of the Brazilian Northeast, particularly from Alagoas to Piauí. Similar alternation patterns to these exist in other Romance languages such as Catalan and Occitan. Although it is mostly an allophonic variation, some dialects have developed minimal pairs that distinguish the stressed variants from the unstressed ones. The vowel is often elided in connected speech it is not present in Brazilian Portuguese. Some Brazilian dialects diphthongize stressed vowels to i, i, a, etc. except i, before a sibilant at the end of a syllable written s, x, z, or rarely, shish. For instance, Jesus e, zui, s, Jesus, faz, fai, s, he does, des, d, s, ten. This has led to the use of meia, meaning meia dúzia, half a dozen for cease, say s six when making enumerations to avoid any confusion with trace t s three on the telephone. In Lisbon and surrounding areas, stressed e is pronounced or j when it comes before an alveolopalatal or palato alveolar consonants followed by another vowel. The orthography of Portuguese, which is partly etymological and analogical, does not indicate these sound changes. This makes the written language look deceptively similar to Spanish. For example, although brief brief is spelled the same in both languages, it is pronounced b beta e in Spanish, but bv tilde bv in Portuguese. In Brazilian Portuguese, in the vast majority of cases, the only difference between final e and i is the stress, as both are pronounced as i. The former is unstressed, and the latter is stressed without any diacritical mark. In European Portuguese, final e is not pronounced or is pronounced as unlike i, which is consistently i. Topic. Consonants Some of the most characteristic sound changes undergone by the consonants from Latin to Spanish and Portuguese are shown in the table below. Asterisk reconstructed Peculiar to early Spanish as in the Gascon dialect of Occitan, possibly due to a Basque substratum was the loss of Latin initial F whenever it was followed by a vowel that did not diphthong eyes. Thus, Spanish hio and oblar correspond to Portuguese filio and filar from Latin filium and fabulare, son and to speak respectively. Nevertheless, Portuguese fogo corresponds to Spanish fuego from Latin focum fire. Another typical difference concerned the result of Latin l and n in intervocalic position. When single, they were retained in Spanish but alighted in Portuguese. Often, the loss of the consonant was followed by the merger of the two surrounding vowels as in the examples in the table above, or by the insertion of an epithetic vowel between them Latin harenum Spanish arena, Portuguese area, today area sand. When double, they developed into the Spanish palatals ll. Merged with in most contemporary Spanish dialects and n tilde. Indeed, the Spanish letter N tilde was originally a shorthand for NN. In Portuguese, LL and NN just became single, L, L, and N, N, respectively. When followed by the semivowel I, L coalesced with it into a J, X, in Spanish. In Portuguese, L and N followed by semivowel I were palatalized into LH and NH. Respectively, other consonant clusters of Latin also took markedly different roots in the two languages in their archaic period. Learned words such as plano, ocular, no, si, terno, tremular, and so on, were not included in the examples above, since they were adapted directly from classical Latin in later times. The tables above represent only general trends with many exceptions, due to other phonological processes at work in Old Spanish and Old Portuguese, which interfered with these. Later regularization by analogy with related words. 
later borrowing of learned words directly from Latin, especially since the Renaissance, which did not respect the original sound laws. Mutual borrowing, from Spanish to Portuguese or vice versa. Cineresis Portuguese has tended to eliminate hiatuses that were preserved in Spanish, merging similar consecutive vowels into one often after the above-mentioned loss of intervocalic L and N. This results in many Portuguese words being one syllable shorter than their Spanish cognates. Credo, lear, mala, manzana, manana, poner, reir, veneer, Spanish. Credo, lur, ma, maca, manha, por, rir, vir, Portuguese. In other cases, Portuguese reduces consecutive vowels to a diphthong, again resulting in one syllable fewer. A teo, e u r o p o, pa lo, ve lo, Spanish. A T E U E U R O P P A U V E V Portuguese. There are nevertheless a few words where the opposite happened, such as Spanish comprender versus Portuguese comprender, from Latin comprehender. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Different sounds with the same spelling. Since the late Middle Ages, both languages have gone through sound shifts and mergers that set them further apart. Topic: <inaudible> Sibilants. <inaudible> the most marked phonetic divergence between Spanish and Portuguese in their modern period concerned the evolution of the sibilants. In the Middle Ages, both had a rich system of seven sibilants, paired according to affrication and voicing, s, t, s, z, d, z, t, and d, the latter probably in free variation with as still happens today in Ladino and spelled virtually the same in Spanish and Portuguese. One before vowels, in the coda position, there are dialectal variations within each language, not discussed here. Point two modern Portuguese has for the most part kept the medieval spelling. After the Renaissance, the two languages reduced their inventory of sibilants, but in different ways. Devoicing in Spanish, the voiced sibilants written s, z, and j per gram became voiceless, merging with s, ss, c, c cedilla, and x, respectively. In many modern Spanish dialects, c, z, theta, is also indistinguishable from s, s, c sesio. Later, the palato alveolar fricative x changed into the velar fricative x, while ch stay unchanged, t. Spanish spelling has been updated according to these sound changes. Deafrication in Portuguese, the affricates written C, C cedilla, Z and CH became plain fricatives, merging with the sibilants S, SS, S and X in most dialects, respectively. In spite of this, modern Portuguese has for the most part kept the medieval spelling. Deafrication in Portuguese, some rural hinterland northern Portuguese dialects as well the Mirandese language preserved the medieval distinction, still indicated by the spelling, with the former affricates being voiceless laminal, voiced laminal and still voiceless post-alveolar affricate, t, respectively, and the sibilants being voiceless apical, voiced apical and voiceless palato alveolar. As much of Brazilian Portuguese, these dialects have alveolar coda sibilants, though a voiceless apico alveolar fricative has a hushing like sound, more similar to <laughs> Other pronunciation differences Since no distinction is made anymore between the pronunciation of B and V, Spanish spelling has been reformed according to Classical Latin. In Portuguese, the spelling of these letters is based on pronunciation, which is closer to Latin and modern Italian. This leads to some orthographic disparities. Compare for example Spanish gobierno, haber, libro with Portuguese governo, hever, livro. 
The endings of the imperfect indicative tense of first, conjugation verbs with infinitives ending in R are spelled with B in Spanish cantaba, cantabas, cantabamos, and so on, but with V in Portuguese cantaba, cantabas, cantabamos, etc. The Spanish adjectival suffix ble, as in possible also used in English, possible. Corresponds to vel in Portuguese, possível in Spanish. The plosives b, d, g are lenited, usually realized as soft approximants b ed, here represented without the undertracks after continuance. While similar pronunciations can be heard in European Portuguese, most speakers of Brazilian Portuguese pronounce these phonemes consistently as hard plosives b, d. This can make a Portuguese phrase such as uma bala, a bullet, sound like una pala, a shovel, to a Spanish speaker. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Contact forms. Galician language shares its origin with Portuguese in Galician Portuguese, but has been subject to later Spanish influence. Castrapo is a pejorative for Spanish-influenced Galician. Fala language a Galician-Portuguese language spoken in the Spanish Autonomous Community of Extremadura. Barranqueño a transitional Spanish-Portuguese dialect with Southern Spanish traits spoken in the Portuguese municipality of Barrancos. Portunhol, Portunhol is the name for the mixed languages spoken in the borders of Brazil with Spanish-speaking countries. Papiamento is a Creole language with Spanish and Portuguese influences. Judeo-Spanish language is derived from medieval Castilian language, but has been influenced by Judeo-Portuguese. Fala Dombo is a Creole language derived from Portuguese but influenced by the rulers of Spanish Guinea. Topic. See also Portuguese language History of Portuguese Portuguese dialects Portuguese grammar Portuguese personal pronouns Portuguese verb conjugation Portuguese orthography Portuguese phonology Wikipedia in Portuguese, list of contracted prepositions Spanish language History of the Spanish language Spanish dialects and varieties Spanish grammar Spanish determiners Spanish verbs Spanish orthography Spanish phonology Preterite Romance languages Romance copula Subjunctive mood Vulgar Latin West Iberian languages <laughs>